First thing, you notice I never use the word chakra because that closes, I mean, we could use the word, but I don't use it because people have associations from their past with it. Other people, they hear the word and they think, oh, that's just spiritual junk and they shut down. Um, you know, and people like put stones over their energy centers thinking that's going to heal them. I mean, I'm sorry, but I think you put your attention there and do a better job. But it's the placebo, you know. But are those energy centers, the first three energy centers, bad? No, they're not bad at all. Those, those three centers are centers of survival. And if you're going to cause a species to exist into perpetuity, you make procreation really pleasurable so that you do it. If the second center has a lot to do with consumption and safety, then it makes sense that when you feel safe and you have food and shelter, it's in balance. But it also means that food, consumption of food, can be really pleasurable as well. And when you take on challenges in your life and you really succeed in them, it takes energy to even get up and get out of bed. You use your third center. But all of these three centers are consumers of energy, drawing from the vital field. It's, a, it's an expenditure of the life force in the body. And these centers can easily be in balance because most organisms in nature, if you study species in nature, they, they have a, a respect for mating timing of mating they they have reason they have a way that they they don't over consume you know they, they they're in balance they're not swinging from don't eat anything to then overeat you know don't uh, abstain from uh, sex and then you know well you know <laughs> you know it's not the it's not the polarity of that it's the, the polarity swings and then as we get up to the center it swings less and this third center is really the ceiling of the ego that's power and Tolkien's books about you know uh, Lord of the Rings the, the ring was power and throwing the ring meant giving up power and something for something greater and it's love that's the, the greater frequency so each one of them have their own frequency and all frequency carries information. Frequency energy has an intent. And when energy moves into any one of these centers, systems begin to change. When the first center switches on because there's energy in there, that center, the energy that activates the brain in that center, produces a mind in that center. Are you with me still? Because consciousness or energy moving through neurological tissue is mind. When neurological tissue gets activated, all of a sudden there's a mind there. So when the first center gets activated, it has a mind of its own. Yes or no? And if the second center is activated, or the third center, or the fourth, when you're coming from different centers, there's a different consciousness or a different intent. And when energy makes it to the fourth center, though, now it's no longer the consumption, but there's the expansion of energy. This is the bridge that starts us to connect to our divinity and connecting to that, putting your attention on it, not only creates heart coherence, but it produces a host of biological chemicals that are released, 1400 different chemicals that begin to restore and repair the body. When you feel gratitude, when you feel love, when you feel freedom, this is a different frequency. When you care for another, this is where selflessness starts. This is all selfish. Now, can you activate this center? And when you activate this center, can you make love to somebody? Hello? Is that a yes? So now you're doing it in a giving way. You're, the consciousness is different than just when it's from the first center. You understand? So then when you have two coming together as one and there's true love and it's done in that vein, in that way, that manner, then there's a beautiful exchange of energy and there's a growth or there's a, there's a, there's a summation of energy. It's not uh, uh, the opposite. So 
As energy, an enormous amount of energy sits in the first center. When energy can move into the second center, as I said, because you feel safe, and when you feel safe in your environment, your body's more in balance, and you can consume and metabolize and digest and secrete and eliminate. All those biological functions take place in the second center. When you become compromised in your environment, and when there's a threat or there's danger, and the environment becomes unsafe, then all of a sudden the autonomic nervous system says, "Move all the energy you can because this is how you're going to take care of the body." And of course, now you're a body, local in space and time. So many people have most of their energy by thinking and feeling in the first three centers, as we said, and. The incoherence that's created in the brain, the emotions that are stored in the first three centers for years of unconsciously thinking and feeling the same way, is taking thought and storing as, en as energy in one of these lower centers. So then, if you're living in the, the the survival world, then it takes a lot to open your heart because it goes against the survival gene. You don't want to open your heart in survival because you would be prey. You would be vulnerable. You wouldn't even sit still, close your eyes, go within. All of that goes contrary to the act of really opening your heart. It's just not a good time to do that. And people focus on matter when they're in that state. And so, this doing this work and in getting energy into your heart. When I was at the HeartMath Institute like 10 years ago, and we were looking at all the research together, I looked at all the research. And the heart, once the energy makes it to the heart, the heart acts as an amplifier. Once it makes it here, the energy goes all the way up, all the way to the brain, right to the thalamic gate, right into the brain, and the brain starts going into greater degrees of coherence. In fact, we have brain scans that hopefully we'll show you this week, where people are in super coherence, really high level of coherence in their brain. Because as they start moving energy into their heart, the brain can take on more energy. The energy in the first center is is rolled up energy, and when you do the breath and you squeeze, you begin to unravel that energy. You begin to unravel it, and when that energy unravels, all of that energy that's sitting there begins to, as it moves up, begins to get more and more intense. Because it's passing through different frequencies, and when it reaches the brain, and the arousal of the sympathetic nervous system is ejaculating the life force that you use to make a child, instead of going out, now it's going up. And when it reaches the brain, that's a lot of energy. That's a lot of life force in the brain. And now the person goes into that super aroused state. And we just know that that person's so coherent, so orderly that their harmonics, their their frequencies that build on other frequencies, and that's exactly how the energy centers work. Their frequencies that build on frequencies. So as you're blessing your energy centers and resting your attention in different one of those spaces in the space around, not only are you creating coherence in here, but by in addition to that, as you connect them. Your act of becoming conscious and connecting and aligning and attuning and feeling it move is creating the very neurological networks to invite the experience to happen automatically, naturally. And as you begin to open this pathway, energy will begin to shift, and the blockage of energy you will feel as a sensation in your body, and you'll feel it as like. A, like a pit in your gut or a heavy heart, that's the body out of balance and it's a feeling. So all of this incoherence, when it starts getting orderly, starts getting more coherent, begins to allow energy to build on the previous center, and build on the previous center, and build on the previous center. And when those centers are aligned and attuned, you have a very coherent, healthy body. And people who have done this work and blessing the energy centers, they're in this room. They've healed themselves of all kinds of crazy health conditions that the doctors had no solution for. People who have chronic bladder infections or prostate conditions or any condition in any one of these lower centers, ovarian、uh, tumors. The energy starts to move, or there's balance in these centers, doing the breath and beginning to disturb that energy. 
as that energy begins to unwind, it just becomes pure energy that wants to go back from whence it came to the brain as a thought. And so fear that's stored in the body can turn into freedom in one second. It's the movement of energy and you will feel it.